the Holy Spirit is the, the most misunderstood person in the Trinity. Of course, we know Jesus, we know the Father, but when it comes about Holy Spirit, not everybody knows about Holy Spirit. Yeah? Uh, quick uh, review. Do you still remember the, uh, the purpose of redemption? Yeah, I did this um, last month. What is the purpose of redemption? <laughs> I, always, I always ask you the same question over and over again. <laughs> what is the purpose? Yeah, oh man, sounds good. I gotta finish this real quick. Okay, what is the purpose of redemption? Of, of course, um, like, do you remember that I have asked you like the question like, why did Jesus have to die on the cross and why did Jesus have to come back to uh, God has had to go down to there and then after after he rose from the dead and then he he walked for another 40 days and why and why and why and why I believe I did this <laughs> and you were there now one simple question what is the purpose of redemption <clears throat> just one try come on <laughs> what is the purpose of redemption yeah yeah Robert Exactly. <laughs> yeah. To bring back His Spirit. Now, listen to me. Without Holy Spirit, you cannot be a Christian. No, that is impossible. Why? Because Christianity is not a religion. Now, remember this. Christianity is not a religion. No, it's not. Christianity is about relationship <laughs> with Christ. So being a Christian, that means being like Jesus Christ. That's it, full stop. Now, it is true that when, um, it's, it's hard to be a Christian. Yeah, of course we, we've heard that. It is really hard to be a Christian. Now let me tell you, actually it's not hard. It is impossible. No. Why? Because we need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be a Christian. Why? Because without the Holy Spirit, we will deny Jesus just like Simon Peter. You remember that story? When Simon Peter said that, when Jesus said, okay, this is the night before he was crucified, when Jesus said, your faith will be shaken. Oh, Jesus said that to his disciples. But then Simon Peter, oh, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Maybe for them, not for me, Lord, not for me. You remember that? And then what Jesus said? Before the rooster <laughs> cross twice, you will deny me three times. Now, when you know what, when when Simon Peter said that, he really meant that because he really loved Jesus, but he's got no power because there's no Holy Spirit inside of him yet at that time. Jesus was not yet crucified. The Holy Spirit was not yet given. So none of them, none of those disciples were born again. So that's why being a Christian is not easy, yes, but actually it's impossible. But with the Holy Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit that will enable us to be a Christian, that will enable us to act like Christ. Right? You got it? Okay, I gotta finish this in 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to, honestly, I don't know how to make it simple because I got a lot of questions about tongues. <clears throat> now, do you know the, do you know the gift? of the Spirit. It's in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 12, the gift of the Spirit, or the, the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, come on. Okay, yeah, how many of them? Nine, nine fruit, you know nine fruits. And there's another nine, but this one, the gift. Now the, the, the fruit of the Spirit you can find in Galatians 5, but the gift, also nine of them, yeah, you can find it in 1 Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12. So uh, maybe I'm not gonna go through every single slide because of, uh, yeah, the gifts of the Spirit. Now, real quick, now just focus on the yellow. Now you can count how many of them? Nine. <clears throat> I'm gonna read this real quick. There are diverse cities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Diverse cities, that means many. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diverse cities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Seven. But the manifestation of the Spirit. Stop right there. The manifestation of the Spirit. Now, at this moment, we know that the gifts of the Spirit, those nine, are the manifestations of the Spirit. 
right? Okay, okay, let's keep going. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now, if you are given that gift, it is for the profit of all, not for your profit. Hello. See that? For the profit of all. Let me give you a short illustration. Let's say, I have a gift of healing. That means it is for someone else. As simple as that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right. All right. Real quick. Um, eight. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. That's number one. To another, the word of knowledge. That's number two. Through the same Spirit. Number uh, nine. To another, faith. The gift of faith. By the same Spirit. Excuse me. To another, gifts of healings. Not healing. Healings. Now you have to pay attention to the detail when you read the Bible. It is not healing, but healings. Plural, all right? By the same Spirit. Now, verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. So the gift of the working of miracles, not the gift of miracles. There are differences. The gift of working of miracles. That means something must be worked in to get the miracle. That's why it is called the gift of the working of miracles. All right? All right, carry on. Uh, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, not tongue, but tongues, plural. So if you want to move to this side, it's and so it's easier for you to read. Please do. <laughs> to another, the interpretation of tongues, not the translation. Right? The interpretation of tongues, not the translation. But like I said, that I need one semester to cover everything. But since I only have 30 minutes, <laughs> 30 minutes ago, I have to squeeze <laughs> a lot of things. Now, look at this tongues, tongues, not tongues. Okay. Now, if you look at nine, those nine gifts, now we can categorize those nine into three different groups. Now, it is not written in your Bible literally, so it's given so that you can, uh, so that it can be easily memorized by you. All right. First, the focal gift, revelation gift, and the power gift. The focal gift is, is something that needs to, to, to be delivered by your mouth. All right. Focal gift, number one. Revelation gift, number three. Power gift. Each will be three of them. All right. Carry on. <clears throat> what is that? The focal gift. Now, remember, we have nine. So, what are they under the focal gift? Number one, tongues. Now, follow this. Not tongue, but tongues. That means many, all right? Interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Because all of those three, if you want to move in that gift, you need to use your mouth or your tongue. That's why it's focal gift, right? Next, revelation gift. What is a revelation? Revelation is something informed from the heavenly places that's why it's called revelation something that is revealed by god himself okay what are they the gift of wisdom the gift of knowledge and discerning of spirit and the power gift faith the gift of faith the gift of healings plural and the gift of working of miracles now that's why uh, now I'm not I'm not going to go into details each and every one of them. Uh, hopefully one day. So if you join the school of ministry, and we're going to cover this in one session or two or even three sessions. But for today, we're just going to focus on the gift of tongues. Remember that tongues. Now, whenever you uh, you hear the word that word tongue or tongues, it is always connected to mouth because the tongue is inside the mouth, right? All right, the tongue. And of course, it is also connected to word, word, because this mouth and the tongue is inside, it is used to release word, to release words. Okay, you got it? So word, mouth, tongue, they're all connected. It says the gift of tongues, not tongue. Now, at least I can give you three different Tongues. Number one, it is the known language. Number two, I'm going back. It is for the prayer language. And number three, it is for the 
prophetic language. One more time. It's a known language that means that tongue, that language, yeah, can be perceived by someone else, can be interpreted. And secondly, it is for the prayer language. This is that we are uh, normally doing during the praise and worship. And number three, it is for the prophetic language. This one, number three, uh, I can say it's not that popular compared to number one and number two. Okay, look at the verse. Okay, for uh, number one, it's a known language. Now, now of course you know that during the day of Pentecost, believe that you know what happened during the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Not only the 12, but round about 120 people. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Right? Number three. Verse three. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of what? Fire. As of fire. So what is fire? So if you read your Bible and you see fire, the word fire, yeah, it's always about power. Power. Right? And one set upon each of them. And they were all filled. And they were all filled. Pay attention to the detail. Something happened and then they were filled. So they were filled with the Holy Spirit after after this number three then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and set upon each of them number four and then this is the result okay now you know the connection and then they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them others now if you continue reading this passage now you will know the rest of the story. It says that because everybody was speaking with other tongues. Now remember, this is about known language. And then, and then many people came. Many people in that city came, and then they were amazed because they said that, "How come we can hear those people? They are speaking in our own language." Now let me. Let me explain. So those disciples, they were, they were speaking with other tongues, like when you're doing the present worship, something like that. But those people that came to their ears, no, listen to this, carefully. to their ears, they listen. What has come out of this mouth is exactly their language. Get it? Now, at this point, please, please. Now, if you talk about Holy Spirit, not only Holy Spirit, about Bible, about Jesus, it is full of supernatural stories, supernatural examples. So we cannot naturalize the supernatural. No. If we try to naturalize, we try to perceive the story with this, our mind, we will come to an error. Because, like I said, we cannot naturalize the supernatural. Many of us, most of us, we just want the natural. Something that I know, that I know, that I can understand with my mind, right? With my logical mind. But it's not something like that. Even the born, the birth of Jesus Christ, it is supernatural, right? Mm. You know that? Mm. His death is supernatural. And he died for three days and then he rose again. How can we explain that? Even the medical science, they can't explain that. It is supernatural. So let the supernatural be the supernatural. Do not try to naturalize the supernatural. Now, in this case, in this case, it is known language, known by other people that came. Those unbelievers came, and it is known for them. You know? Okay, there's one story. 
I forgot the year. I think it's in uh, in Sweden, in Sweden. One time, probably I shared this. I don't know. Oh. In the church service, in the church service in Sweden, the pastor was um, was preaching, and in the middle of service, and then all of a sudden, somebody uh, gave a prophetic declaration in tongues. In tongues, you know the the language, the language. So he he, I mean that person that that was speaking at that time, uh, he he didn't have any idea what. Is coming out of his mouth. He was just go down by lunch. He up. It's just like praising the Lord. And then right after the service, somebody no 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 not after the service, but towards the end, before the service ended, there was somebody came to the altar and he said that I was here. I came here. I was assigned to kill you. So he was a terrorist. But all of a sudden, I heard somebody it was a lady. That actually, it was a lady, the one that was prophesying in tongues. I saw and I heard her spoke in my language, perfect Arabic, telling me everything that I was about to do. So the terrorist he came, surrendered his life to Jesus. It's a known language. So that lady. She just said Koramashi Kinalatash Hokoraparalapash. But it is known by that person. It revealed something in his heart, his plan, his bad idea. Then he repented. There is a known language. Number one. I have to keep going. The prayer language. This is what we are practicing every week. Right, look at the scripture. First Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Look, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. That's why if you are here, let's say if you are leading the worship and then you are worshiping in tongue, it's not your understanding that is praying. It's your spirit. So what do you mean? Because as human, basically we are three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. The one that you see, this is just my body. You cannot see my soul. The soul is inside. But the innermost part is the spirit. You cannot see the spirit. You cannot touch the spirit. But as human, we are three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. It says, if I pray in a tongue, this is Apostle Paul, my spirit prays. But my understanding, that is soul, is unfruitful. That means I don't know what I pray. So what are you praying if you don't know what you're praying? Let's carry on. For, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. For he who speaks in tongue does not speak to men, but to, to God. To God. To God. Now, if you're praying, of course, you're praying. You bring your prayer to the Lord, to God. But there's another kind of prayer where your enemy, where your enemy, they cannot, no, they cannot hear you because you are praying in a secret. Look, no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks what? Mysteries. Now, how many of you know that you have enemies out there? You have enemies. The Bible says you have enemies. You have enemies. Now I'm not talking about somebody that actually doesn't doesn't like you. No, no. I'm talking about demons, devil, the devil, demons. That is your enemy. That is your enemy. Like I said, that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. It is your enemy. It is your enemy. It's in the Bible. It is your enemy. But if you are praying in town. You are praying mysteries in secret, so he cannot steal anything from you. Let's say, I'm going to give you an illustration. Okay, I pray to the Lord. Lord, please, Lord, please. I'm, I'm in a hurry, Lord. I'm in a situation because, uh, because uh, there's something happened to me. There's something happened to my family. My family got this, and my parents, my parents got this, 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 and they got this, 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 this. I'm praying in front of the Lord, but in fear. And the enemy knows that I'm in fear. You know what I mean? Hello? 
But if I pray in town, he cannot, he cannot steal anything from me. That's it. Pray in town. Look, he who speaks in town doesn't speak to men, but to God. To God. So it's like you have a direct channel, you have a direct line between you and God only. Even angels, they do not know. Only you and only God knows. Right. Next, Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. Look at the right. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. Actually, we don't know how to pray. Sometimes even when we are praying, it's not accurate. It's not the right thing. It's not the right thing. Because the Bible says, actually, we don't know how to pray. Mm. The accurate prayer, the right kind of prayer. I'm not saying that if, uh, our, prayer, uh, our prayers are wrong. No, no, no. But many times we pray, but we pray not in faith, but we pray in fear. Okay? Look. But the Spirit Himself, capital S, the Holy Spirit, knows everything, our need, and at the right time, intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too, too deep for words, too deep for our mind. This is the second, the prayer language, the tongue. The first is a known language. Secondly, the prayer language. Now remember, the prayer language, like it says, no one understands. That means including you. You don't know what you're praying. Unless you're praying to the Lord, Lord, please give me the gift of interpretation of tongues. Then you will know. But not many people actually pray for the interpretation of tongues. And the third one, for the prophetic. This is the exact the example that I shared before, previously in the church, there was a terrorist. It's a prophetic, prophetically. Now, this is not popular nowadays, but um, this is what I mean. Prophetically, in, for the prophetic, it can be interpreted or basically it must be interpreted. So who can interpret this? Somebody that has the gift of interpretation of tongue in the middle of the uh, surface and then all of a sudden somebody let's say one of you and then you all of a sudden you prophesy in town no nobody knows but all of a sudden somebody that has the gift of interpretation can interpret what he said and then everybody is encouraged because oh now i know for instance like in the middle of the uh the, the uh, surface and then all of a sudden somebody stood up and then and then all of a sudden from some, somebody from this side, the Lord says that you will be the head only and not the tail. The Lord says, do not be afraid. Everything that was out there will not come to you. That is the interpretation. Now again, don't try to naturalize the supernatural. Get it? Three different tongues. That's why it's the gift of tongues, not tongues. Now the question is why? Why is it very important? Why the tongue is important? Why? Genesis 1. Okay, I'm going to bring you some facts. God created things with words that means with his mouth and with the tongue inside even god himself during the creation if you go through the, the bible from genesis 1 and 2 and 3 it is always god said god said god said something god said something it is with the word it is with the tongue and we're gonna we're gonna see why the tongue is very important <clears throat> how important is it? Your mouth, your tongue. Look, Jesus performed miracle with his tongue, with his mouth. Always, always. Like a blind man came and then open, be open. The deaf, yeah, deaf man, 
be open. The lame get up and walk with Tom. You remember that? Even Jesus taught his disciples to talk to a tree or to a mountain. Remember? Talk to that mountain right in front of you. Be removed. I mean, you have to use your tongue. You have to use your word. That's very important. Look, you are saved by your mouth also. If you open the uh, Bible in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, it is by your heart you believe Jesus, and by your mouth you have to confess. So the confession, that means you have to use your mouth to declare something that you believe in Jesus. So it is very important, right? Next. Matthew 12, 36, 37. Look, but I say to you that for every idle word men may, men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Look, for by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. It doesn't say by your act. By your words, of course, and usually the, our action will follow our words. But it says, by our words, we will be justified. So please, please be careful what we're saying. Proverbs 18, 21, this is, <clears throat> this is famous one. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life, isn't that amazing? And those who love it will eat its fruit. That means what? That means with this tongue, with this word, with this mouth, we can pronounce, we can release death, or we can release life. It's our choice. We can release life, we can release death. I can say one, two, or three words, and then you, all of a sudden you get angry with me, or me with my mouth. I can say one word, and then you will like me. As simple as that. Either life or death. It's your choice. This is powerful. Death and life are in the power of our mouth. So I'm trying to show you how important this mouth is, actually. Next. Do you remember this story? Elijah? Okay. Every time you, uh, okay, every time you hear the name Elijah, what is the first thing that will come up in your mind? What is that? He didn't die. He didn't die. Yeah, that's a good one. What is the, the miracle that he did? Elijah, great prophet. Come on. Yeah, who is that? Went up to heaven with the uh, chariot of fire. Yeah, okay. But the, the miracle, the miracle, the miracle. Yeah? Rain, yeah, yeah, he called, yeah, he stopped the rain for three and a half years. And of course, after that, he called the rain. Another thing, yeah, thing. Yeah, that one, that one, yes. He called fire from heaven. He called fire from heaven and he killed 450 prophets of Baal. 450 against one. 450 prophets of Baal against one single person, Elijah. I mean, he's powerful, mighty prophet of God. But after he did, no, not only he killed 450 prophets of Baal and another 400 prophets of Asherah. So totally it's 850. Now how, what kind of man is this? So powerful, so mighty, yeah, he can just say something and then fire will come down from heaven to burn just about anything. Now think about this person, this guy, the power that he has. But, but, look at this. Look at this, this is Elijah. Look, Ahab, Ahab is, is the wicked king. All right, told Jezebel, Jezebel is his wife, also super wicked, all that Elijah had done. So Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how Elijah had killed all the prophets with the sword, like I said. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, 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 so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. That means what? It's a threat. Jezebel sent a messenger to threaten Elijah with words, with words. Number three. Then he was afraid. Elijah was afraid. Mighty man of God. 
can call fire from heaven. And then now he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba. Now think about this. Only by words. He just, he just defeated 850 prophets of Baal. And now a woman named Jezebel sent a messenger. Now she didn't send a soldier only a messenger now think about this if she really really wanted to kill elijah she would have sent a soldier with a sword of course you know what i mean but instead she said a messenger with a word this is the word you're gonna die by tomorrow and then elijah he was afraid now think about this how powerful this mouth can be we can release death we can release life Right? Now I can share you more and more examples, but I don't have time. Now, do you remember the uh, story of the Tower of Babel? Babel? Babel, do you know? Do you know that story? The Tower? This is, <laughs> I don't know if I have time, <clears throat> but it's okay. Uh, now you may, may read that. You can open your, uh, your Bible in Genesis 11. That's an amazing story about how important the, the language is. Because before that, before the Tower of Babel, the whole world actually was in one language. And God scattered them around by all of a sudden giving them different languages. So they couldn't communicate to one another. All right, now open up with me to James 3, 2 to 12. Again, how important the mouth is. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle, bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses, oh, this is a parable, mouths that they may obey us, and we turn in their whole body. For look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds. They are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Now, number five, look at this. Even so, what is that? The tongue. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Next, see how great a forest a little fire kindles. Number six. And the tongue is a what? Fire. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. It defiles the whole body, our tongues. Wow. And sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell, by the enemy. So this is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Seven, for every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea, oh, keep going, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. Number eight, but no man can tame the tongue. Well, is it really dangerous? Yeah. It's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. What is that? The tongue. Our tongue. With it, with our tongue, we bless our God and Father. And with that same tongue, we curse men. Remember, Proverbs 18, 21, life and death are in the power of our tongue. That means, look, we can bless people, we can curse people with the same tongue. Look, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not to be so. All right, go back to the why. Why? Now, you remember, if you read your Bible, the first story when God sent His Holy Spirit after the resurrection, during the day of Pentecost, something happened. We just read. What is that? They were filled with Holy Spirit. But right before they were filled with Holy Spirit, God gave them a new language. think about this since this one inside our mouth is very dangerous 
so that when God wants to save you, He has to sanctify this. That's why He overrides our own language and gives us new language, His own language. You got that? It's our time. So prayer in time, pray in spirit. It's a mighty weapon. If you believe, if you understand this, even God Himself knows. Okay, I'm gonna give my spirit back to people or people. But first, I need to sanctify not hands, not feet, not eyes, but something inside your mouth. Your tongue. So that when we open our mouth, we will only say something to bless people, not to curse. Yeah? There is the importance of tongue. Now one more thing. Do you know that Jesus, Jesus came to bring back the Holy Spirit, right? Because when Adam fell, the Holy Spirit departed from him. Now, since then, there were two kingdoms, only two kingdoms, kingdoms, the, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God. So this is what happened. We cannot stand in the middle. Either we are in the kingdom of God or on the other side, the kingdom of darkness. Only those two parts, two kingdoms. Kingdom of darkness or kingdom of God, okay? Now, think about this. Now, <clears throat> why, why does, okay, how about this? Okay, why, why do people in Australia speak English? instead of their own language. Why we, all people in Australia, why do we speak English? Or if you go to Singapore, they speak English. Because if you take a look at the uh, history of that nation, years ago, the Britain Kingdom invaded that land. Do you know what I mean? Invaded that land. So if one kingdom invades another kingdom, and then they were about to take colony, yeah, subdue those people, this is that they will always do. They will teach those people a new language so that they can forget their own language and they about to give them new identity by now you have to speak my language. Okay, I'm from Britain and I came to Australia. Let's say. So I about to make you guys a colony of Great Britain. Then I will tell you, from now on you have to speak my language, our language. Forget about your language. And then all of a sudden in school they will have to teach English as the main language. You know what I mean? Because it's the identity. Language is your identity. Language is your identity. Now I speak English right in front of you. But back home, when I pick up my phone and call at my relatives in my country, in Jakarta, I don't speak English. I speak Bahasa. No, I speak English, but when I pick my phone and I call the Lord God, I speak His language. Hello. It's a prayer language. It's a prayer language. It's my identity. I'm born again. You are born again. You are given a new identity, a new language. I use that. But I don't know, I don't understand. I don't understand what it means. Remember, you cannot naturalize the supernatural. Let the supernatural be supernatural. 
Okay, so what is the hindrance? Last, I'm gonna close with this. What is the hindrance? I want to receive the the gift of tongues. What is the hindrance? Only one. This is the hindrance. Because as normal human, we cannot switch off our mind. Can we? No. We can't switch this off. It will keep going. It's it's like a hard drive in your computer. It will keep going. Once you start saying something that quote unquote doesn't make sense, your mind will come against you by saying, okay, what are you saying? You don't even know what you're saying. Stop that. But it's not God. It's just our soul, our mind. Because we just want something natural. We do not want the supernatural. That's normal human. That's why even when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you are filled with His Spirit, you still can block your mouth from operating in new language. Yes. Because this is very strong. This is very strong. So, what is the hindrance? Our mind, our soul. So if you want to receive the baptism, don't think about, okay, what should I say? No, just open your mouth and start saying something new. When the Holy Spirit come upon you. All right? Okay, I think my time's up. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to speak a new language when the Holy Spirit gives that to you. It is biblical. I'm telling you, it is biblical. Don't be afraid. Do not hesitate. It is biblical. It is in the Bible. The question is, do we need that? Yes, we need that. If you want to be effective uh, prayer warrior, you need this. So that you can speak the mystery. When you pray a prayer, a specific kind of prayer, the enemy, they cannot steal anything from you. Uh, this is the question. Okay, so, sorry, this is just my question. Um, what happened then if you cannot speak in tongue yet? Does that mean that you're less or what do we do? Does that mean that the Holy Spirit is not in us? All right. Okay, uh, yeah, I've shared this back, basically. So this is what happened. <clears throat> now, so who's going to be in song? Because I'm going to talk about salvation. It has a lot of things to do with born again and all spirit and things like that. But this is what happens. When you are saved, you are born again, you receive His Spirit. Okay? You receive His Spirit. At that moment, you are born again, your spirit is bang, perfected. Cannot be even more perfected. But not your soul, not your body. Remember, we are three parts. Okay. Now the question is, if you're not uh, able yet to speak in tongue, doesn't mean that you are less. No. Remember, the question is always this. Do you believe in Jesus? Are you born again? If you are born again, because here's the thing. Let's say you you let's say you meet someone, someone like uh, probably your one of your friends, and they said that are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. But the thing is this, even if they say that they're born again, you don't know if they really are born again or not. You know what I mean? Only God knows and that person should. Alright? So again, if you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. Yes. The next is try to surrender your soul so that our mind, this mind, will not be the hindrance whenever he is giving you that new language. The only hindrance is our mind. The only hindrance. Okay. But again, let me let me remind you. Doesn't mean that you are less. No, absolutely not. You're not less. You're not less probably something inside of you, something inside of us, without you realizing, is actually the hindrance. Okay? So surrender. And one thing, ask, ask God. Ask Him in prayer, Lord, baptize me with your spirit. And then Jesus Himself that will baptize you. And then when, not if, no, not if, when He baptizes you, surrender your mind. And then, once you are baptized, the power will flow. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I believe that.